People buy this computer for the Apple efficiency, the battery life, the optimizations, and the Apple ecosystem. But for years, PC users have always claimed that for real work, like engineering and data science, you still need Windows. Anyways, I did something illegal. I turned my M2 MacBook into a Windows PC to answer one simple question. In 2026, has parallels with Windows on Mac? gotten close enough to mac os to make this a fair fight i had to handicap a mac yeah i know parallels has been around forever but it's still a guest in apple's house i allocated six out of my eight cpu cores to windows and also 9.8 gigabytes out of my 16 gigabytes so right now we basically have a mid-range windows computer on arm living inside my mac and of course the first thing windows showed me was this new battery icon they made with Canva. I started with Geekbench 6, took me about 6 minutes to run. That's 6 minutes of my life I am not getting back. In single core performance, we see a 28% drop. Yes, we know single core is the measure of the snappiness. You feel the 28% drop. It's not slow, it's just not Apple Silicon snappy. But multi-core is where the virtualization scene really kills the windows. Yeah, we have 5,000 versus 10,000 multi-core. 5,000 on Windows, 10,000 on regular Mac OS. That's about a 49 to 50% drop in performance, despite allocating 6 out of 8 cores. Yeah, it doesn't really tally, but what can I say? Anyways, 5,000 is still plenty good. Yeah, when you consider like Intel 8th gen and 9th gen computers. All right, let's talk GPU. First, I wanted to run a compute test with Geekbench to get a taste of how the GPU is on virtualization and parallels. But then Geekbench just laughed at me technically. Yeah, <laughs> what do you mean by we can't even identify a device? That's scary. Anyways, being the stubborn creator that I am, I downloaded Asphalt Legends Unite from Epic Games. Supposedly, Asphalt Legends Unite is supposed to be optimized for ARM, but despite that, it runs like I'm trying to run it on a second gen Intel Core laptop. The loading screen loads quite reasonably, but you can't even attempt to play it. It's like the CPU trying to take over the workload of the GPU. That is exactly what it looks like. And that can never be good news. Still with the stubbornness here, I tried out Combat Master. I heard about the game when I asked Gemini for suggestions of games that are not too heavy. Combat Master 5, I found it on Steam. It's also supposed to be optimized. But it turns out that Windows on ARM is fast, but it still can't full anti-cheats. What do you mean by we can't run it on a VM? What am I supposed to do with my VM then after paying a hundred bucks for Parados? So after a gaming disaster, we need a win. So I tried Speedometer 3.1 to get a sense of how it handles rendering of web pages. And honestly, Parados surprised me 26.7 as the Speedometer score. Of course, it's a 34% drop from Mac OS and the 40.5 we get on my M2 Mac. But then 26.7 is still faster than most other AMD and Intel laptops out there. It feels snappy for sure. Yeah, Microsoft's Edge finally has a chance to shine here. Mostly for downloading Chrome, but a win is a win. I have a 2 million row heavyweight file I want to test with Microsoft Excel on both platforms, but let's check how video editing would look like on Parallels. Yeah, yeah, we have CapCut. That's the quickest app I could get that boots on the Microsoft Store and the App Store on Mac. I imported a 4K footage. Yeah, 4K 60. <laughs> it's probably the worst thing I could do, but I did it anyway. As you can see, it runs very smoothly when I try to scrub it on Mac OS. Despite the fact that Mac OS was hosting Parallels open in the background, and even the parallels open in the background had cap cuts open in the background of parallels, despite that the encoders in Mac OS handled by Mac OS were not breaking the sweats. I can't say the same about cap cuts on Windows on parallels though. Yeah, because even after creating a proxy, it still scrolled like I was trying to run CapCut's desktop on a 2005 PC. <laughs> Again, this still points at using the CPU to handle the workload of the GPU. I may listen to how CapCut on Windows on parallel sounds. It looks identical in handling HDR, so 
yeah that's terrible all right so you have the finale a 2000 heavyweight csv file opening it with microsoft excel both on mac and on windows and this is where windows is supposed to shine because i have had rumors in the past that microsoft office suites and microsoft excel also in fact more optimized for windows than for mac os so this is it windows time to land your comeback punch yeah let's start with mac os okay opening it going going Oh, 15.37 seconds. That took quite its time to open such a project. Then I switched to Windows. I was ready for speed, but... Okay, going, going. Whoa. <laughs> 22.46 seconds. That took roughly 32% longer to launch. So it turns out that raw silicon power matters more than any kind of software optimization. So is Parallels finally reliable in 2026? On the CPU side, I'll say absolutely. If you need something like Microsoft Access, which is completely undoable on macOS, yeah. That's quite alright. But you can't expect Parallels to do any kind of gaming. Yeah, avoid that. So before you go rushing in to dump your hard-earned money on buying it, you should know what to expect. And that's the whole point of the video. Of course, I knew Parallels was going to lose point blank. Yeah, why made this regardless to show you just how much of a loser it is when you want to compare it to macOS. Speaking of macOS, if you want to see some cool apps that run natively and run very well on macOS, click this video right here. And thanks for watching as always.